everybody, it's Franny, and we're back with another episode on the Beck Spider. Last episode, we pulled the head out on the right side of the car, and this is that, and it went off to the machine shop. Well, one of our uh, viewers, DJ Ambrosia, pointed out that there is a crack on cylinder number four between the two valves. So this has already been to the machine shop, and I, I wish they had caught that, but they didn't. All four valves have been replaced, and... The reason was not so much that the uh, that the fluted end was bad; it's the stem here. So these have little keepers on them that hold these plates on underneath uh, on top of the springs here, and they were sort of chewing up the tops of the valves. So that's why all four valves got replaced, and I think that's going to necessitate us taking out the other side as well, and that'll have to go down and get double checked as well. So that's what's on tap for today. We're going to go ahead and pull the other cylinder head off and I've got to clean the pistons and everything else that's in there. But that brings up a point um, and I kind of broke one of my own rules here. I like to inspect parts pretty carefully when they come off the car just, just so that when I take them to someone or the machine shop or whatever I've got a good idea of what I think might be wrong with them and I kind of broke my own rule. I did not see that crack and it would have been great to point that out ahead of time. So that's bad on me, but uh, we'll get it sorted. We may need to replace the head if this crack is really too bad. We'll see what the other one looks like as well. So, all right, well, let's get started pulling that other head and getting everything cleaned up. We can see our interference problem here. The top of that horn is right up against the firewall and we are not off the studs with that flange so this is going to be a little bit interesting i'm going to get started pulling this head off of this side we'll start with the carburetor again and work our way down through the tin and everything else so here we go Once again, we have our cylinder strapped down on that side and also on this side to keep them from moving. I want to show you something kind of interesting. So the head bolts on this engine are actually nylocks. You can see the little nylon insert in the top there and that's kind of bad for me for two reasons. One, it's going to be hard to torque these things properly because that nylon will clamp down on the stud and affect the torque rating on this. So the other thing is you can see that the, they, they've cut the thread or the um, facets back a little bit here and I, it's pretty hard for me to get this socket all the way on because these nuts sit inside a little alcove and when they sit inside an alcove like that I can't get this socket all the way on. I have to push really hard and I just get that teeniest little bit of these facets and then they're rounded off as well. So I've got a good craftsman socket here, which is great, but um, I'm not super psyched about these head bolts. We have all of our head bolts off and we accounted for every single washer. So we're ready to try and pull this thing off. Hopefully it'll be as loose as the one on the other side. I guess we'll see. Yep, there we go, it's loose. Yay, okay, that's good. There we go, our pushrod tubes. There's the first one. Second one. Fourth one, which still has the pushrod in it, which we'd rather not drop. There we go. Nope, not much different. So there we are, right up against the diagonal. So we've got the same issue as last time, so I'm going to go ahead and use that same trick I used last time. Hopefully we can get this thing off. We slide it back all the way until we can get this stud free. Up like that, then slide it forward to get us the most clearance, and out it comes. So a little different strategy this time. I put the strap up 
around the center of the transmission there, but forward of the mount. Loosened up the bolt down there, and you can see I got a little bit of clearance there. That's nice. And it actually did come out. We can take a look at our pistons here. This is uh, number two right there. And that is cylinder number one right there. Now this blue strap that's over here is pulled that tight. It's every bit I could get out of it. It is super duper 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 tight. So way tight. I have it jacked up down there as you can see on the 2x4 on the jack. Same strategy as last time and it's almost got this, this rear left wheel off the ground. Yay! Got it off. This one was actually a little more difficult than the other one to get off. Not sure exactly why, but it was, I was just, you know, we're talking like an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch kind of thing. Super close. So it doesn't look too bad down in there. Everything looks pretty normal. I will double check these this time and we'll get a good reading on whether they're okay or not before they go off to the machine shop. But okay, now that our heads are off, both of them, we can now get to cleaning the pistons and the inside of the cylinder. There's a ring in there and make sure everything is completely clean so that when these guys come back, they'll be ready to put on. It's that fun time in the project where we get to clean things. Okay, so we've got our pistons exposed over here, but uh, they're a little dirty. I'm not gonna go super crazy trying to get them, you know, spotlessly shiny, but I do wanna clean them off a little bit, see if we can get the carbon off. One of the reasons is that when, a, when an engine is cold and there's lots of carbon, fluffy carbon all inside of it, and you shoot some fuel down in there, the carbon will just soak up all the fuel. And then the car will run incredibly lean, the engine will be super duper lean, and then once it heats up a little bit, all that fuel comes out, and then it runs too rich. So that's not good. It also affects the compression, and it's an aggregate inside the cylinder system is bad all around. So the problem with cleaning these things on the car is we have to be very careful we don't get anything inside the engine. That's super important. So I'm going to work on the pistons and kind of, and once I got it fairly clean, I'm going to push it back a little bit and clean a little bit more and push it back a little bit. I just want to make sure that we don't get anything that seeps down to the first ring. So I'll be, try to be as careful as possible with that. Um, in addition to that, what do you use to clean off that carbon? So I've seen um, several videos and things of different people trying different things from WD-40 to uh, oven cleaner. Ah, I wouldn't do that. So I'm just going to use a little bit of brake cleaner and plastic spatulas. And these are, you know, believe it or not, these are actually plastic knives, uh, uh, like razor blades. I've never seen anything like this before. It'd be kind of fun. We'll give these a try. Um, and just my plastic brushes and things as well. This is all just plastic. What I'm not going to use is a piece of Scotch-Brite. And I originally thought this would be a great thing because it's great for scrubbing on stuff. The problem is that the, they embed an aggregate in this in, this, in these fibers, and they're invariably going to break off. And if they get in there, now you've got another aggregate in your engine, and that's really a bad thing. So I'm going to not use this. Not going to use any type of steel wool is even worse, because you, you're invariably going to break off a zillion little fibers, and they're going to fall into the engine. Now you have all this metal in the engine, and it's steel. That's super horrible. So we're going to be as you know easy on it as we can be. Lots of towels, lots of microfiber towels, and I'm probably just going to grind away with a microfiber towel because these things are great. They don't leave any lint. They've got sort of a rougher side to them and I can sort of just go and kind of get crazy with them. These ought to work pretty well, but in the end it's just going to be um, a lot of elbow grease. So we'll do our best to get it um, nice and clean. Now the pushrod tubes that are under the pistons here, I've, I've pushed um, some, some paper towels into those things to, clean, to keep those things clean. I don't want anything falling in there. And I've got the other piston that's already all the way back. Uh, I've got a rag in that cylinder as well because I just don't want to get stuff falling in there as well and then kind of, I just don't want it in there. Um, the last thing was I made sure I readjusted my strap so that all four cylinders are held in because I am going to be turning the engine around a little bit to move the pistons in and out just so I can get better access to them. So, all right, well, 
Now this ought to be fun. I wore my kind of crappy t-shirt and I've got holes in the sleeves. And that's just because I'm going to become a chocolate schmurf as always. So I did look, I do have some WD-40. Now uh, this stuff is mainly for displacing water. That's what WD-40 stands for, water displacement number 40. I'll use it in steel fuel lines if I've cleaned them out and I need to get the water out, that sort of thing. But I've heard that it actually works pretty well on these on carbon, on cylinder heads. Uh, the Humble Mechanic actually has a video on it and it was sponsored by WD-40 so I was still a little dubious but you know what the hey. So it seems to kind of be working. Well checking back in after about 10 minutes of work with our plastic riser blade and mostly crazily WD-40. Seems to be working really well. Let's see what we've done. So look at this. We've got the vast majority of this cleaned and I just sort of spray on the WD-40 and let it sit for a little bit and our plastic razor blade has been doing a great job of pulling this stuff off without scratching the piston. So I might just sort of dress it up from here. Like I said, I don't need it perfect. I just want the major bits off of it and just want it as clean as we can get it, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. Remember all around here, uh, inside the, the cylinder here is also full of carbon because it's, it's a, a head of the first ring. So we're going to get that all cleaned as well. Look at that. Well, that is impressive. Look at that. That is looking pretty good. We have our little arrow mark there. Um, we can read the other marks on top of the piston. And we just have a little bit of carbon here. Boy, this is, you know, I could totally live with this. I'll work on it a little bit more, but that looks really good. Okay, well we got the head off on the left side of the car and we got all four pistons clean. They're not perfect, but they'll be just fine. I still have a bunch more parts to clean and I'll have to get to that as well. I want that other head, the head that's actually been back from the machine shop to go back again. I want them to look at that crack in there and they're gonna have to get into that uh, left head that we just took off as well. So that'll take a few days and things, but I've got plenty of other work just cleaning things up. And hopefully when we get those heads back on, we'll have a chance at getting this thing to run properly. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please get a thumbs up, questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thanks so, so much for watching. Till next time, safe travels. Bye.